Hi guys, have you ever wondered what is it like to date as a gay person living in Russian Siberia? If you don't have any clues or if it's really hard to imagine it, that's okay. I'm here to provide some interesting insights to this topic. Um, before we start, if you haven't seen my coming out video, please do so. That way you will know uh, who I am and my personal story living as a gay person in Siberia. And without further ado, let's start talking about gay dating in Russian Siberia, Republic of Tuva. So today I will try to answer questions like where to look for gay people, what kind of gay people live in Tuva, some first date ideas, and as well the question if it's worth dating someone living there. So the first question that I'm going to answer is where to look for gay people. I came up with three approaches that could be helpful. The first one is something that we see in heterosexual relationships, uh, something that is written in the books or shot in the movies, really romantic, love on the first sight sort of approach. I'm talking about direct approach. When you, in your daily life, meet someone really attractive and you would like to make your first move, whether starting a conversation or asking a phone number, yeah, I'm talking about that. Well, since Tuva is a really conservative society, doing so could be really and really risky. There's a high chance that you might run into straight guys. They could be homophobic as well. You can try this approach if you meet these criteria. Your gay radar is at least 90% of accuracy. You are bold and you are sort of physically or mentally immune to any threats. That way, you can go ahead and try this approach. For the rest of us, it's dangerous. I personally never tried doing so because I'm scared as yum. Uh, there was only one time when I tried to DM someone on their Instagram, but that person turned out to be strained and it was really awkward and I will never do that again. It's really funny because my uh, Jamaican friend Steve when he comes to Argentina to visit me, when we take a walk, he talks and flirts to random guys like all the time. And for me, it's such a miracle because like, I can't do this. It's, I'm too shy, I'm scared. Like, I don't know other if other person is interested or not. But like seeing him talk to these random guys, it feels like they enjoy their flirt, I guess. The second approach is to ask your friends. Meeting new people through your friends is a really safe option. If you are open about your sexual orientation to your friends or you hang out with other gay people, it will be really nice to ask your friends if they know someone new in the community, uh, someone you have never, never met. And possibly could be a good uh, potential for you to find your mate. I personally met a few couples that met each other through their friends and they have been like in a really healthy relationship, I guess, for five, for 10 years. Ask your friends occasionally if they have any updates concerning some new people around that will be, you know, helpful. So the third approach is dating apps. Um, which is the most modern and easiest way of finding gays around you. In Russia, though, we mostly use Hornet, as well as in Tuva. Um, some people use Tinder, and some gays, they prefer to uh, make their community around gay groups in VK. I think it's also really common. The thing is, is that it's quite hard to find those groups. I'm not talking about getting accepted to those groups because people are quite protective and they usually add up at people that they know or friends of friends. Most of the profiles in Hornet are faceless, which is understandable. Usually people start sending their selfies when they are sure that you are trustworthy. I mean, they're going to start sending a bunch of different kind of photos, if you know what I'm talking about. Yep. So you need to earn their trust first. And now, let's talk about what kind of gay people you can meet in Tuva. There isn't any scientific data concerning this topic, obviously, no one has done it before. 
but I, based on my personal experience, made up a category of gay people. I will also include an AI-generated images of these people so that you will have an idea of what they look like. The first category of gay men, I call them quote-unquote straight men. Yes, half of the people that you will meet in the dating apps, they're actually people who consider themselves straight in their ordinary life. But behind the closed curtains, they might date, meet, or sleep with other gay men. Among them, you can find politicians, lawyers, workers of ministries like Ministry of Education, Ministry of Culture, they are fathers, brothers, and you can even find shepherds who practice this. It's a compromise for them. In one hand, they can meet the conservative norms of the society. They can get married, have kids. In the other hand, they can also keep up with their gay nature. The interesting fact about this category is that they're mostly looking for hookups and nothing more serious. The second category of people, I call them accepting but hiding is those gay people that accept the fact that they are gay, they haven't given up on themselves. However, due to the society norms, they learn to hide themselves really well. From one angle, they seem like careerists, like really busy at their job, at their career, and they don't have time for building a family, which is a good excuse if your relatives tries to ask you like, um, have you met your girlfriend? When are you going to get married? You can just answer like, I'm busy, like I'm working on my career. You know, it's a really good excuse. I always used it back in the days. It always worked. And in the other angle, these people could be in a really serious relationship for a long time. And yeah, they have their partners, they, they're enjoying their gay life, but in their closet secretly. So the third category of gay people, I call them with the Chinese uh, phrase xiao xian rou, uh, which literally translates as a little fresh meat. It refers to teens, to younger people, amateur, and who are just starting their like dating journey. This younger generation is exposed to globalization and they are present in social media. They follow all the trends that are popular. And they are usually uh, like Gen Z. They are open-minded, they are really progressive, and they might be open to their close friends about their sexuality. They're not scared of it, they're bold, and they are like our future. With the new anti-laws that the Russian government accepted uh, to in 2022, I feel like this category of gays, they are slightly switching to the category number two. And the last category of gay people that I would like to talk about is these people that are need a help. Um, I'm talking about gay people that are that have really deep mental health issues, whether they were bullied a lot or they have suppressed some traumas from their childhood. These people are not adequate even during the like simple conversation they seem lost and not just that they could be really aggressive and now i would like to talk about some first date ideas that can be helpful for you if you live in tuba it will 100 percent depend on your objectives if you are someone who is looking for a hookup then of course you can meet up at your place or at someone else's place that you are meeting up with but if you both don't have any place to meet up, then you can try and rent a daily apartment, Pasutichne. It's quite common, I think, in Tuva uh, for people who are looking to have fun. Um, I'm also not aware of the cases if people do it outside, like in the parks or riverside. I'm not aware of such cases. I've never done it myself. Um, it's funny because when I was in China, I was offered it a lot especially from the students and they use a really interesting phrase it's called Jan, which means um, get involved in a wild fight so it's really interesting metaphoric the next idea is you can try and ask a person how to take a walk i personally enjoy this um, date a lot because 
during it i don't get really awkward or i don't get stressed or nervous because when you're walking it's, it's much more um i know i feel more calm and yeah it doesn't get awkward at all there was one time when i went to a date uh, with my ex we decided to take a walk and when i first met him it was during the lockdown period of covid i was wearing a mask and i kind of was really shy and I, and i opened up my mask and i said hi this is what i look like which wasn't necessary but in you know, something that i remember besides that you can also meet up in a cafe um, in this case it's good if you know your um, companion good if you like taking some time to know each other that way it won't be really awkward and also um, consider that in a cafe um, there will be some issues with the privacy so make sure that the place that you're going to uh, the table setting is like you know far from each other so that your neighbors cannot hear what you're talking about or you can meet up in a hookah places or a bars with some background noise with a lot of people moving that well you will also like you know um, talk about whatever topic you would like to another idea is to take a ride in a car this um, date idea usually comes and offered by the category number one the straight men um, yeah it's a nice um, idea to freshen up just to see the city during the night it usually happens in the night you can see the city lights and it's beautiful the person might try to flirt with you and even try to get physical so make sure that you are you set you set your boundaries and you will be safe and the last idea that i had but i no longer use is inviting people over for a party eating something or drinking and talking i have done it once and it was really terrible and people wouldn't leave my place even if i asked them so I threatened them that I will call police if they don't leave and, and after that they only left. So, you know, also be mindful about that. After you had your first wonderful date, you're probably wondering what's next. What are the next stages of a dating process? So if you ended up liking each other, um, then of course you can continue chatting. Eventually, you can become good friends and maybe start something serious. It's an ideal scenario, but there could be some other scenarios as well. I personally believe that Tuvan gays, since they're really hidden and kind of scared, they tend to not look for something serious. They tend to not even fight for their love and romance. And it's quite sad. Besides that, since the community is quite small and we know each other, uh, we tend to gossip about each other. Uh, there's a lot of jealousy going on. Everyone is talking shit behind each other. And it's quite toxic. It's really toxic to be in this kind of community. So instead of that, we should support each other, you know, help out each other and yeah, be there when we need each other thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was insightful and interesting and i believe that this is the first ever video made on this topic and many people could be interested in watching it so if you know someone please share it will help me to grow my channel and yeah thank you so much again and see you in my next video bye bye